Lumion 10, 11, and 12 all saw improvements that allowed for more realistic materials in your renders. Well, I'll tell you what, Lumion 2023 is quite something, as it allows for full creative freedom in your materials. It's rare to go out there in the real world, shoot photos of textures, and then convert them into materials. That requires real dedication. What's very common, though, is that you do a good old-fashioned search on texture websites, and you download materials for your project. Well, here's a guide on what all those maps do and how to use them. If you go to the resources on the Lumion community, there's an extensive guide of textures that you can take a look at. All websites have their merit here, but we can simply go with the first one on the list for the sake of this tutorial. We've got a simple but elegant bar interior prepared, so let's jump into it. We'll select our surface and go to the Material Editor. By double-clicking the standard material, Lumion will open its settings. Clearly, we need to do something about this one. Let's go to the color map and assign the correct texture. We'll choose the PNG format for now, since it's already got an alpha channel that gives it transparency. As an alternative, you can go with the non-transparent file formats, like JPEG, and then assign an opacity map to them. The map scale slider in Lumion is set to meters in real world coordinates. So setting the map scale to one means that the texture size will be the equivalent of one meter in real life. This is not news. We all know that the relief controls the bumps and dents on the material. So let's add a normal map and tweak it a bit. But here's some news. The gloss map has been replaced with the roughness map. But don't worry, this is not something tricky. The two maps are opposites to each other, and if you have one of them, to get the other one, a quick color invert will do the job. You can use the built-in button or Photoshop. Loading this map will tell Lumion which areas of the material are rougher and which are smoother. Now remember, apart from the texture and normal maps, the other slots don't need to be filled unless you want a highly detailed material with a special look and feel. Projects can become heavy and sluggish if you bring together tens of maps. So be selective and use common sense to determine when that detail is crucial and when it isn't. Let's get back to our things. We're in pretty good shape and this material is already looking great, but we're going for incredible. Here's a cool new addition. Metalness controls how metallic an object is going to be. The map acts as a mask that makes the white areas more metallic and the black ones less metallic. Simple, right? Also, if you recall from previous versions, Lumion would give you a single slot and the possibility to select any one of the falling effects for certain areas, make them more emissive, more reflective, or mask their opacity. Well, good news in case you need a much higher degree of control. Those values now receive separate sliders and each of them gets a map. All the maps work on the same principle. White means they're fully affected by the slider value and black means they're not. Reflectiveness controls where the material's reflections are stronger. Emissiveness dictates which areas emit light. And opacity will control which sections are transparent and which aren't. We've already mentioned this at the beginning. Then displacement was introduced in Lumion 10. And since then, it's only gotten more support from all the other material settings mentioned above. For those subtle surface offsets, we're going to add it in here too. Last, Let's take a step back from our surface and take a look at its frame. You see, there are two more sliders I haven't explained, and this is the perfect place to do so. First, the clear coat slider. Imagine you have a hardwood floor with a thin layer of lacquer on top of all the other settings. That's clear coat for you. For the sake of the argument, I'll switch the floor to a wood material for a second, just to show it here too. Use this value to add an additional layer of shine on it. My advice? Go for zero or 100%, not in between, unless you have something very specific in mind. Second, remember waxiness? Well, now we have waxiness 2.0, which is called subsurface scattering. This setting takes into account the physical attributes of an object, especially the thickness and translucency to calculate how much light remains inside the object and how much shines through. A couple of good examples? Well, wax, of course, and human skin. Let's hit the render button and bring our creation to life. A little secret, I prepared the same project in Lumion 12.5, looking great. 
But I think that Lumion 2023 really steals the show here. Wow. Bravo. I hope this tutorial brings you a step closer to more amazing renderings in Lumia. If you need more information, I'll link two really useful articles below that explain all the hardcore technical aspects. Give them a read. It never hurts to learn something new. I'll see you next time.